It's great to have you here tonight. We've got more folks coming in, but uh, come on in. So thanks for coming tonight. We'll have more people. Usually most people come about 10 to 20 minutes late. Um, and no matter how many times we tell them parking's hard um, at a big college campus, uh, sometimes they don't believe us. So it's so wonderful that you are here. I'm uh, Dr. Susan Madsen. I am the founder of the Utah Women in Leadership Project here at the Utah Valley University. I'm also a professor of organizational leadership in the Woodbury School of Business at Utah Valley University. Um, and love it, love being here. And we've got lots of changes happening here, some exciting things, and Ruth will talk about one of them. Um, so here our evening event is called Navigating Transitions, Finding New Paths, Passions, and Purpose. And as I mentioned, uh, I, we host this through the Utah Women in Leadership Project. And our mission is to strengthen the impact of Utah girls and women, whatever that means, in their homes, in their communities, in their churches, in their business environments, whatever that means. But uh, helping women have, find their voices and have confidence and know they need to go to college and go back to college if they need to and stay in college and get those college degrees. Um, and also use their voices to, to lead in other ways, like I said, in their homes, but also running for public office and, and uh, being leaders within companies and so forth. So if you haven't seen them out at the table, we have uh, some resources and briefs in our brochure. And I want, do you like this little note I put, because sometimes I forget to thank uh, my staff. We have uh, Deirdre, Robin, and Chorosky here tonight. If they're here, raise their hand. They're all in the back. Thank you. <laughs> and also the, the various volunteers that have come to help us in the transitions. Thanks so much for that. We do in our project research, uh, we do resources, events, and outreach uh, a couple weeks ago, we were in Price and uh, Tooele doing outreach events in those communities. And want to recognize our two premier sponsors who have donated um, uh, to help us with food, mainly food, and that is Squire and doTERRA. And then we also have some other sponsors, including the Center for the Advancement of Leadership here at UVU, the Women's Success Center here at UVU, the Business Resource Center here, and also the Woodbury School of Business. And the Utah Education Network is a wonderful partner. They put together this pre-roll, wasn't that nice, before? And the videos, and they help us edit um, all of the, the sessions that we'll have tonight so that we can share those later with folks around the state. And uh, we have, you've seen this scroll, we have lots of social media, so we encourage you to follow, like, or whatever you do with different social medias as well. Um, and so I want to mention, and some of you have picked up the flyer, our next event that we're going to have is November 1st. And do you see that picture over there? Have you seen her on the news yet? We are super, super excited. <laughs> so. so she will do our short keynote at the beginning, and then you can see the breakout sessions. The one for, we always have one for young women, 12 and up. And uh, any of you, no matter how old you are, can go to that session because you're still young women. What is your superpower? Discover your strengths as young women. Another one asking for what you want and not feeling guilty about it. Do we need that, women? Sometimes, yeah? Okay. And then making connections, how to build a strong network for women. So that's what's coming up. And now I want to just give a short uh, introduction of our keynote uh, keynoter this evening. Ruth Todd, I've got my glasses just in case, but I printed it big. So we'll see if I have to put my glasses on in the middle of it or not. Um, so Ruth Todd, I'm so grateful she's here. She's been a supporter for years and followed the work for a lot of years, haven't you, Ruth? Ruth Todd is Senior Vice President of Public Affairs for New Skin Enterprises. She oversees the company's corporate communications department as well as many charitable initiatives um, that New Skin does around the world. And before joining New Skin, the New Skin team, she worked in public affairs as a spokeswoman for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints from 2010 to 2013. And prior to that, does she look familiar to any of you? Okay, you might remember her from 
from uh, being a, uh, an award-winning television news anchor and reporter. Throughout her 25-year career in the news industry, she worked on air in Washington, D.C., and Phoenix, and also Salt Lake City, as we know, for ABC, NBC, and CBS, uh, local affiliates reporting and anchoring the news. And uh, Ruth has done a lot of work for numerous charities and organizations. I have a whole list of them, but I won't take too much time because I want to give you plenty of time. Um, and she serves on several community service boards, including the BYU Alumni Board, and Wells Fargo Women, and, and various things as well. She received her bachelor's degree in communications from Brigham Young University. And she and her husband, a Salt Lake attorney, have five children and five grandchildren. You enjoying that role of a grand? Oh. So welcome. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you, Susan. It's so great to be with you. Come on in. Come right down. There are lots of seats in the front. Thank you for coming. I know it's just so hard to get here after work, and parking's always awful at a university. It just is. So thank you. I'm, it, I'm so um, happy that some of my own family is here. My kids are here. Some of my classmates are here because I'm currently in a transition period um, um, from the BYU EMBA program. And thank you for coming. You guys are the best. And neighbors are here, and coworkers are here, and relatives are here. So thank you, and friends. It's so fun to see so many um, dear, dear friends and faces. So thanks for, for coming tonight. I do just want to give a plug for the Women in Leadership Project because, as Susan mentioned, I have followed this work. And I remember when the um, article came out in the paper, or maybe the, it was just some of that research that came out that said, we have more women that start college, but a higher number that doesn't finish. Were we number one in the country for that? We were like, we were number one. That's a dubious number one. And, and I know that it meant something to Susan years before I knew about it, and she got right to work on it. So if you ever are looking for a place to volunteer, do you need them? Yes, she needs them. But it's just so great to empower women to have impact and influence no matter what they choose, where they live, where they are, that we can serve and serve each other and lift each other as we go. So plug for the project, it's doing incredible work. Plus, get on and read and read and read a lot of the stuff that's come out from this project has been great. So let's see, I'm gonna stay on time. Give me, a, we wanna be done at seven, right? So I'm gonna motor through this, but we've got some great uh, breakout sessions tonight. And I know you have some other friends and, and people you wanna hear, so we'll be done right at seven. Okay, navigating transitions. They don't ask you to be the keynote if you're in the 20s or your 30s, or even your 40s, but maybe in your 50s. You get to talk about transitions and finding new paths and new passions and purpose. All those, no, that's okay. All those years in the news, you know, I was taught never to bury the lead. And so I'm not gonna bury the lead, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna cut to the chase right now. And that is this, as you go through your life, and I see people at all different start points, midpoints, uh, maybe they're where I am in their 50s or even beyond. No matter where you are on your path, the lead of the story, the lead of tonight is this. The transitions, the finding new passions and purposes, the bumps in the road, the twists along the way, the unexpected pieces are what make you grow, are what give you richness, perspective, they're what make life interesting. Some are hard, some are, most are unexpected, some are difficult, but looking back, I will tell you, it was the hardest days that got me to here and the most unexpected turns that helped me get to today and look back with appreciation and some hard, hard scrabble growth, if you will. So we're gonna talk a little bit about that. So Alice in Wonderland is on her path, and she sees the Cheshire Cat. And do you remember what they said to each other? Alice says, please tell me, which way should I go from here? And the cat says, well, that depends on where you want to get. I don't much care, says Alice. Well, then it doesn't really matter which way you go, says the cat. And I think there's such a great lesson in this. We need to know 
where we're going to go, at least in broad brushstroke terms. When I taught at BYU for a few years, um, on the first day of class, I would tell my students, I could say, I'd look across, most of them I taught a broadcast journalism class, and I'd look across the classroom, and most of them wanted to go into television news. I had something to say about being the voice of gloom and doom and death and destruction for all those years, but they were like I was when I sat in their chair, and eager and excited, and they wanted to go into television news, but not all of them. Some of them just wanted to get better at presenting in front of people. Somebody else wanted to do a, a blog and a vlog. So they had different reasons for coming, but they all had hopes. And I would say to them on the first day of class, I can promise you this. Not one of you in this class will have your life unfold the way you think it's going to. Not one. I can promise you that you can decide who you're going to be on that path. And that's sort of part of my theme tonight. How did I get here? Well, let's see if I can, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm moving on my computer. I guess I need to move on this, sorry. There's, there she is, did you wonder? And there he is, okay. Now, for those of you kind of on the young side, you may not recognize, this is how we used to talk on the phone. <laughs> this is when nine people in my family shared one phone. You can't even imagine that, can you? Nine people shared one phone number and one phone. And if you really wanted to have a, you know, like a conference call, you just shared the receiver. And not only that, it was stuck to the wall with a short cord. Do you remember that? Of course, that was how we lived. So at my house, there was, there was phone etiquette. I was the second of seven children, and we were always to answer the phone, hello, Jones residence. Hello, Jones residence. So that's what we did. And so um, when it happened enough that I'd say, Jones residence, and someone would say, David? I'd be like, no, this is Ruthie. And, and then someone finally said to me, well, you've got a, you've got a nice deep voice. And at first I was like, <laughs> And then they said, you ought to try broadcasting. So somewhere in my youthish, that seed was planted by I don't know who, but someone who mistook me for my brother on the telephone. <laughs> I got to college, I had no idea, no idea. My freshman year came and went, my sophomore year came and went, my junior year came and I was like, I have got to figure it out. So. That little seed, of, seed that had been planted about you know, speaking and your voice. And then I thought, what do I like? What do I feel like I could be maybe OK at? I liked reading. I liked writing. I loved current events. I put that all in one big soup with a voice and then mixed it around, and out came journalism for my major. I can't tell you I was passionate about it when I started it. I was passionate about pieces, especially the news and current events. But I didn't really know, and I went in kind of thinking, well, I hope I can do it. And I went into a class in my broadcast journalism um, major, and the teacher said, there are more people trying to get into broadcast news in colleges across America than there are spots in the industry. And I remember thinking, well, I can either give up now or be one of those two people. And so I think somewhere I decided, I'm going to give it a go. So what's my major? It was broadcast journalism. I didn't know how it would turn out. I had no idea. And I could never have guessed that I would end up 10 jobs later here at UVU tonight. I ended up in the news for 25 years, ended up becoming passionate about it, loving what I did, whatever, wherever I was. I ended up working at seven different stations, ABC, CBS, NBCs, as you heard, in DC, in Phoenix, and a, a bunch in Salt Lake City. In fact, someone said to me, what channel did you work for? And I said, two, three, four, five, seven, nine, 11. <laughs> and those were 25 awesome years. And I learned from some of the best ever. When I worked in Washington, DC, where our local news was often the world news and sat at the feet of some of the best journalists ever, I just learned so much. And then learned from great people in Phoenix and Salt Lake as well. And I felt super blessed. While I was teaching at BYU, I got recruited to come to the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and work in their public affairs department. To work partly in, um, in interfaith outreach, was, which was very interesting to me, and then also to be on their media team because of my 25 years of experience in the media, which, by the way, I still would rather ask the questions than answer the questions. 
but also to work on their media team and to be a spokesperson. And it was such a great time that I thought, this is an experience I would love to have. It was when we had two LDS candidates running for president of the United States. We heard that there was going to be a Book of Mormon musical. We thought it might be big. Um, <laughs> And, and uh, so many interesting issues. The missionary age change for the church happened in those times. So there was a lot going on in ch church public affairs. So it was really, really fun. I learned a lot about crisis communications. Turns out when you have 85,000 teenagers out in the world, you have some crises. So, so really great. And again, I worked with marvelous people and learned so much there um, at, when I was working at the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints as well as teaching at BYU. Well, then I was just minding my own business, and I got a call from Newskin, and they said, come on down. We'd like to talk to you. And I said to my husband, well, I'm not going to work in Provo. I live in Salt Lake, and, but I'm going to go. I'll go meet these. I've heard great things about these people, and I'd like to at least meet them. And long story short, I got, in the, I got in the car on the way back, and I said, I think I need to do this. I think this is going to be totally different than anything I'm going to do ever or have done, and I want to try it. And these people are remarkable, and I want to work with them. And he said, and you want to drive to Provo every day? And I said, well, I don't really want to make the commute, but maybe if I can get a hybrid car and drive in the HOV lane, it will mitigate some of the pain, which is what I did. So let's talk about what you see on the screen. You talk about, what do you see? You see brands. You see some of the most tried and true, strong, well-known. You go to any city in the world, and you're going to see and know some of these brands. What makes these brands so amazing? What makes them worth so much money, worth so much goodwill, worth so much um, in advertising and in reputation and all those things? A strong brand is made up of many things. And if you look into Harvard Business Review or Forbes or Fortune, there are scores of articles about how to make a good brand. And I would like to talk to you today, especially you younger girls who are starting on the path, or somewhat, or you may be on the middle of the path too, about building your brand. You're building your brand this very minute. With everything you do, with everything you are, it doesn't matter whether you are scooping ice cream at your first job, or somewhere in the middle, or if you are already you know, down the path a lot, you're building your brand with everything you do. And I don't mean a brand like who you are on Instagram. I don't mean a brand that is what's your veneer to the world. That's not what I'm talking about, not at all. What I'm talking about is your personal brand, who you are, what you stand for, what is your core? What do you want people to know about you, say about you when you're not in the room? That is your brand. And we build our brand every day in our jobs, in our families, in our neighborhoods, in our communities, in our world. We build our brand with every response on Twitter, with every post on Facebook, with every uh, like on Instagram. We build our brand with everything we are and do. And I think that one of the most powerful things we can do is stay true to the brand we want to build. Now, if you're looking over your shoulder and you're thinking, I wish I could change this. Don't do that. That is absolutely worthless. That is just, you know, if only are two of the most worthless words in the language. Look ahead. Stand where you are and say, what do I need to do to start right now and build the brand that I want to portray and truly be to the world? The real me. That's what I want to build. Let's talk about some of these. If you look at some of the top, um, the top business schools in the world, the top branding agencies in the world, they will tell you, you want to distinguish yourself from others. And what does that mean? That means that you stand and stay true to your core no matter what. I have been many times in a newsroom where we had standoffs on what stories would go in the news and what should stay out. And, where it should go in the news and you know how high it should play. And if someone knew one of the people in the story, sometimes they were tempted to put it down and bury it when it really was the lead. You absolutely have to distinguish yourself in everything you do by being true to the core and the values that you espouse. You also want to make a memorable impression. You know what that's like. So what does that mean? That means you put your best foot forward every single day. 
In every interaction, you want to be memorable in the ways that are true to your brand. You allow people to know exactly what they can expect to you. If you are a student and you are on the janitorial uh, team at five in the morning, what do you do? You show up on time. You're reliable. You, you leave the bar bathroom as sparkling as you possibly can. We think that sometimes menial jobs don't build our brand, but in reality, they absolutely build our brand. And they build it internally, so what we know about ourselves, that no work is beneath us, and they build it ex externally. So interesting that this very week, we have an open position at New Skin, and a person applied for the job, and the first thing I did was go right to LinkedIn, and did you know, there I knew about eight of the same people. And so whether this person worked with them in college or in high school, at their first high school job, or at their first job out of college, or was a neighbor of this person, or was a relative of this person, they have a brand, and I'm going to go find out about it before I hire a person. So just keep that in mind, is that um, you want to allow or have people know exactly what they can expect and then be consistent over time about who you are and what you stand for. Name recognition. You know, this is so interesting because I've worked with a lot of people that have name recognition. I mean, let's be honest. When they write your name under you on the TV every night, night after night, people start to get it, right? But you would be surprised how many times I'm called Michelle, Carol, <laughs> Shelly. Happens, it happened all the time when I was on, on the air, which was great. And, you know, I was, I was flattered. I love those women. They're great. Um, but always make it a point to, no matter if you think someone should remember you or not, just say who you are. Hi, my name is. And so then they will get to know. And also that tells them, I care about you. And I don't expect that you would remember my name necessarily. It's a competitive advantage. Your brand should be a competitive advantage in everything you do so that when you do apply for a job or when you do want to go into politics or when you do want to join the school board or when you do want to go to the PTA and make a difference, people know about you and they say, I want her or I want him on my team. Let me tell you why. Customer loyalty is a huge thing when people are, when companies are building brands. And it's absolutely easy to make the transition to your personal life as well. That um, you know how to be loyal. That you know when someone shares something with you that needs to stay locked up in a vault, it stays locked up in a vault. This is loyalty. This is loyalty to all the people that will help you as you build your personal brand. Shared values, I think that when I say shared values, what I mean here is that they're values that build a good brand. They're reliability, integrity, all the things that you already know that you want people to feel that you espouse, that you have, that those are part of who you are. And finally, credibility. You know, it's, a, it's interesting. If you do these first ones, you start to gain credibility. When you start um, doing things at your job or doing things in your, in your life, wherever it is, your neighborhood, your family, and people can count on you and they know you're loyal and you make a memorable impression, then you get credibility. Credibility is one of those things that just comes over time. You can't hurry it, but you can certainly gain it as you, as you um, build your brand. Oh, we're almost out of time. Okay, I'm gonna speed through a few of these. Told you that you, are, you build your brand every day. How do you start? You start with who you are and what you stand for. Um, you realize that you're building it right now. We talked about that a little bit. When you hit bumps, this is a big one. When you hit bumps, I want everybody to be able to look back at how they handled the bumps and transition and feel good about it. I wish I could tell you that I felt 100% perfect about how I handled some things along the way. But you make mistakes. So what do you do? You get up. You dust yourself off. You try to transition with as much grace and elegance as you can. And you keep going. You keep going because if you still believe in yourself, that is building your brand, and that is what will stand. You develop your skills and become the best. I told you that I wasn't particularly passionate about um, going into the news at first. I, I didn't know, and I, and I was afraid that I couldn't make it or couldn't do it. But I'll tell you what else I knew or what else I learned and have learned, and now I know it 100%, and that is no matter where you are now, if you will develop skills and be really, really good at something, 
you almost get the passion afterward. If you have somebody in your, a boss that says to you, I want you to do this, and you think, that is the most boring work, or I don't really want to learn this or get this certification or learn you know, how to do this, you lose the opportunity. It may be the only time in your life that that comes. And if you continue to like put skills in your toolbox, you may be the best ice cream scooper, but you have these skills. But what you've learned in, in the process isn't just scooping ice cream. It's running a shop. It's meeting people. It's you know customer loyalty. It's all those things. So develop your skills and then be the best. And a lot of times, passion doesn't come at first. Sometimes it does. But a lot of times, passion comes for what you do because you've worked so hard at it and invested so well and developed those skills. And this is the secret sauce. The whole way along, you help others along the way. I remember walking into um, a newsroom. It wasn't in Utah, but I was so excited to meet this woman that had been very iconic in, in the city. And I couldn't wait to learn from her. And I just thought I would watch her so carefully and, and get to know her. And she couldn't, she could not even say hello to me. And I was new and young and I, I didn't have anything that I could offer her to help her, that was obvious, but I was so crushed that she did not have time for me. Certainly not to be a mentor, but not even to really just talk about you know, the day's news. And I was on the early, early morning news, like go in at three in the morning, and she was on the nighttime news, so we really didn't cross paths all that much. But I remember thinking, I am gonna make a vow to myself right now. And I was young, I was 23, 22 or 23. And I, I thought, I'm gonna promise myself right now that I'm, I'm not gonna look over my shoulder. Someday I'm gonna get older and somebody's gonna be uh, better than I am at anchoring the news or they will want somebody that's younger or whatever. And that was a real reality when I started. Um, and, um, and I thought I can either run my whole career and look over my shoulder or I can help along the way. And I decided I would be way happier and happier at the end of my career if I would help others along the way. And I'm telling you, it was so interesting that I made that decision because multiple times in multiple newsrooms, the news director would come and say, we have this new gal. She's coming in from wherever, wherever. Will you train her? We want her to watch your tapes. We want you to train her, um, get her natural on the air. I'd be like, train her so she can just like work me right out of a job? Okay. And then I'd remember the situation. I'd be like, nope. Just train them. There's room enough for everybody at the top. There really, truly is. And if I believe that the secret sauce is helping people along the way, then I better live my brand, right? I did help people. Right to the networks. They just leapfrogged right over me. I kept my job. It was great. <laughs> you all know who this is. Do you not? Astrid Tumanez, the new president of Utah Valley University. You need to know her story. If you haven't heard her welcome you in six languages on YouTube, you need to hear her story because she has had more transitions, more curves, twists, bumps in the road, and yet through BYU, through Harvard, through MIT, starting as a poor girl in the Philippines in a shanty town, thanks to some Catholic nuns. You need to go hear the story yourself. Make sure you, you look. This is a woman we can all look to as somebody who has elegantly gone through all the transitions of her life. Okay, I know I'm, I'm over, so let me just, in, in, clu, in cl conclusion, let me say this. I say to every person in this room, no matter where you are on that path, believe in yourself. Become the brand you want to be. Know who you stand for, know what you are, and know what you're going to never compromise about and never quit evolving. I told you I'm still trying to evolve. I did just start this EMBA program and it's pretty much the hardest school I've ever done. Right, you guys? We all have this huge assignment to do on Friday in quantitative analytics and we're dying. But it's so exciting that we are evolving together. And these guys are girl bosses that I'm going to school with, by the way. Let me, let me end with this, because Katie Couric was awesome to me. And when I went to the Today Show to do some commercials and to do some things, Katie Couric treated me, some you know, local news anchor from a much smaller market, and she said this, be fearless. Have the courage to take risks. Go where there are no guarantees. Get out of your comfort zone, even if it means being uncomfortable. The road less traveled is sometimes fraught with barricades, bumps, and uncharted terrain, but it is 
but it is on that road where your character is truly tested. And have the courage to accept that you're not perfect. Nothing is and no one is, and that's okay. I echo those words, and then I want to say also, as you're dreaming what you want to do, dream big, bigger than you can be. You'll be surprised how you surprise yourself. Thank you very much. carry so many things. <laughs> Women do. Thank you so much. That was wonderful. I, I need the slides still on. Can you turn, can you turn the slides back on? Okay. All right, this is the slide I want it to be at. Um, so we're going to let you move to the, your rooms. No one's staying in here. We're all in different rooms. So the first one, the young women in transition, how to thrive when life keeps changing. For those people, you just go up the stairs, out the back door, and turn left once you're heading out that. Uh, navigating the home to work transition, you go out, the, out and just pretty straight. That's where you're going, pretty much straight. And then the last one, discovering new purpose for empty nesters, retirees, and aspiring souls. That's where I'm going. You can go out the door and turn right, go down the stairs, and there will be someone to direct you. Thank you so much.